Um, we cannot disregard the fact that it might be an attack. Uh, we can also we cannot also disregard the fact that uh, this is a result or the ep epitome of mismanagement and corruption by the current uh, sectarian ruling elite and its clientelist network. Uh, however, um, what what is important to point out is that this change in narrative or rhetoric regarding uh, the incident by the sectarian ruling elite, by the people in power, by the president mainly, uh, the security um, uh, forces, uh, the intelligence forces, etc. This is part of the deflection game and uh, deflection game of the blame that they are playing. So when you take into consideration the current uh, political sectarian or confessional system in Lebanon, you know how it's divided in different sects. Each sect controls a, a certain security agency. Each sect controls uh, a certain entity in the in the state or in the government as well. So by deflecting blame, they know that this will lead eventually to a rising tension between their follower bases, a rising sectarian tension between their follower bases that will actually supersede the fact that the Lebanese want to go down or at least uh, want to understand what happened behind uh, the, the massive explosion on August 4 and they ask for accountability and justice. Personally, I think that the current sectarian ruling elite has lost its legitimacy and credibility since the popular uh, protest movement in October 17, since October 17. And they think that they can run away from accountability and from the, from the responsibility of what happened. But whether it is an attack or not, whether it is mismanagement or not, they are to be bl to be blamed, and this is a crime against humanity. This is a crime against the Lebanese people. Hezbollah is part of the Lebanese political system. It's deeply entrenched, and right now it is the orchestrator of the system. It is the most powerful uh, militia in the country. In addition to it, it's mainly a militia that is that has a political party that represents it in, in government and in the parliament. So they are to be blamed? I don't know. But if we go to Google and we put Hezbollah and we put ammonium nitrate in the Google search engine and we press enter, we can see that there is a relationship between the militia and it stacking and storing like uh, amounts of ammonium nitrate all over the world and being accused of using it in terms of manufacturing its bombs and pops possibly rockets there's a, a, an extreme currency devaluation the currency has lost almost 85 percent of its value uh, in addition to massive or uh, in, in inflation rates and large numbers uh, of unemployment in addition to a, a 50 percent of the population being under the poverty line and the, these are the numbers of the world bank add to all this mix the explosion that took place on august 4 uh, the level of destruction uh, is estimated to be worth three to five billion dollars in addition to the amount of the, the scope of, of death, uh, the lives lost and the businesses lost, which means that the, we're only going to spiral downwards in terms of economy. And this is a major crisis. Actually, it's a catastrophe. It's not a crisis anymore. The, uh, the the level of inequality in Lebanon is massive. It's yeah, it's it's unbelievable. You have one percent of the of the population controls over fifty percent of the deposits in the banks in the banking system. Add to that the fact that since the popular protest movement of October seventeen, the banks imposed an unlawful capital control. However, who did it target? It targeted the people, uh, basically medium uh, and small depositors in the banks. So you, you weren't allowed to withdraw your savings that are in dollars. The, the, your savings got lirified in a way, it turned to liras, and they were giving it to you at, a, at, a, at an exchange rate lower than that of the black market. Uh, and while in the meantime, reports say that the, the, the uh, central bank allowed, in addition to the banking sector and the uh, obviously the ruling elite, they allowed the flow of, of massive amounts of billions of dollars outside the country since October till today. The estimates are around six billion dollars and this number was given by the head of the uh, or the director of the Ministry of Finance. Honestly, has failed to achieve anything tangible. 
we have failed to provide um, something or results for the people who went down to the streets and, and believed in, in the movement and in the protests and in the goals set by, by the movement. So what can this movement in the history of the country do is bring these movements and these uh, groups together that emanated from the, uh, from the protest movement and possibly forming one or two major coalitions in order to allow people to come under them and, and uh, get momentum uh, from that. The main problem and the cancer of this country is sectarianism. So the system is built on sectarianism and sectarianism allows you to be corrupt and to steal without actually being held accountable. Because if you are, let's say, a Sunni and you are corrupt, when, when people are trying to hold you accountable, your sect is going to rally behind, behind you and defend you because they're going to consider that as an attack over them. Uh, what should be done is two things. First of all, at some point, uh, Hezbollah needs to give away its, its uh, arms and it needs to integrate as a political party in, in the system. In addition to that, a new uh, political system and the social contract should be put in place away from the um, traditional sectarian political system. We should move towards a secular uh, country that works based on competency and meritocracy where competent people get awarded instead of working on a sectarian basis where people are rewarded according to their loyalty. On the political level, I think Lebanon uh, needs to move towards a, an independent judiciary body. Uh, on the economic level, the system in place uh, is, is a failure, basically, because the Lebanese econom economy was based on the remittances uh, and the inflows of, of uh, expats from outside the country. We're not a productive economy in any possible way. We should move towards a productive economy. Of course, this doesn't mean we have to go and start working in agriculture, because Lebanon is a very tiny country, but we can be very creative in terms of uh, services, in terms of the tech, uh, tech world, also recreating the banking uh, sector in Lebanon uh, in a way uh, that has that can attract investments uh, from outside the country, given the, the country's location, the strategic location of the country on the Mediterranean. And the last thing is the, the, the need to move from the sectarian political system towards a secular one, where the dreams of the youth uh, right now in Lebanon could be achieved one day, uh, where, this, where the, they can feel this sense of belonging to their country and an ownership over their country as well.